Hello, now we have Lorraine Maseno with us. Dr. Lorraine Maseno, you have to unmute yourself. I can unmute you. Mrs. Maseno, Dr. Maseno, welcome to our session. You have to unmute yourself, please. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> welcome. So, everyone's here. We're happy to open the session. I will share again the session, the structure of the session for a second. There you go. This is the program. Here you can see. So, First of all, we have to choose a moderator for the circle of the participants. Um, is anybody, does anybody want to volunteer for, to moderate the session? Otherwise I can do it if you want me. We trust you. Okay. So your input is going to be 10 to 15 minutes and we have 20 minutes uh, discussion and um, the mapping for agenda for action is other 10 to 15 minutes. So, Dr. Maseno, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and hearty welcome to all of us who are on this, um, who have joined this work group. The topic of my presentation is ecotheology. I had given my slides uh, earlier uh, to be shared. So, I just want to find out who, who would be. I can share them. Kindly, yes, you would share them that way. So we will have the first slide and be able to continue. Um, I just hope the participants that you're keeping safe in your respective places uh, in this foreign times, but uh, it is my hope that uh, we will cope well. So thank you. I just wait for the slides if you have them and we'll start. We will just be introduced. Thank you. There we are. Um, uh, in, in this webinar, we are looking at religious communities and ecological sustainability. We want to have an angle from ecotheology. What does ecotheology have to say on matters climate change and on ecology? We will be looking generally at the variations within ecotheology because we come from different traditions, religious traditions, and that variation is important as scholars and as practitioners to take into uh, cognizance because ideally when all is said and done, it is important that within ecotheology it has to be culturally relevant and we have to be sensitive to the context. So we will move to the next slide in which we would want to begin with matters terminology. What is ecotheology? And I'm happy that one of our presenters, um, the respondent to the very first session this very morning, Dr. Mangaliso, spoke into ecotheology, but from a Pentecostal perspective. So a few of those things will resonate with what we'll be talking about today. Now, on matters uh, ecotheology, we would say that it, ha it is a shortened form, a shortened form of ecological theology. Now, this term, ecological theology, 
was first uh, coined, has been understood to be first coined by one John Cobb uh, in the mid 20th century. And then later on, around in the 1960s, early 60s, it was given greater attention by one Joseph Flutzer. And what he did in a presentation calling for an earthly Christology, he was uh, making a presentation at the uh, WCC, World Council of Churches, where he was calling for greater attention to cosmic soteriology. We find this um, definition in terms of terminology introduced in the book, Modern Christian Thought, and which is an edited book uh, by Fiorenza and Livingstone uh, in uh, 2000. So in general, we will say eco-theology is a fusion of two words, ecological theology, and so we'll be able to proceed to into definitions. I move to my third slide. Thank you. And here, how to define it? We've seen the terms itself, but then we will say that within Christian the eco-theology, we will have collective responses because it's not one, um, like I said, there are variations. They are collective responses by Christian communities across the world on matter, environment, and for us to have an eco theology, we are looking at how do we practice the stewarding of land, how do we talk about recycling and loving all of God's creation. So for this matter and in this place, we imply that creation as is may be here for a while, but we need to take greater responsibility to steward it in the context of the ecological degradation that we are seeing and in the times we live in. One important theme within ecotheology is creation. And so the premise within theology is the existence of God and this existence, this God who exists, called things into creation and so when we look at eco-theology, we will be careful to affirm the goodness of creation, but much more to see that God is involved, implicated within this dynamic of creation. In general, eco-theology will help us see that it is important to care for creation and uh, be able to have responses that speak to the stewarding of the creation that we are a part of. We then are able to proceed to the next slide. What then does ecotheology, does it have a role? Do we have, can we say that ecotheology would play a role from the Christian community in which you come from and to which you subscribe? Is it possible for you as a person and as a theologian or a person interested in theology, is there a place in which ecotheology can have a role in matters environment? So among many mainline churches in the global south, then Christian ecotheology is emerging as key. Now remember, ecotheology could also be in other religious um, uh, uh, circles and could be Islamic, etc. But in this case, for this presentation, I have narrowed it to Christian ecotheology. And what will ecotheology, what is its role? What it shall do, it is key in addressing the problems of environmental degradation and climate change. So the eco uh, the person who's doing ecotheology is looking at how the environment the problems of environmental degradation, how are we going to address them? But also uh, ecotheology will provide a language, to give a language on how to articulate environmental degradation. Further to it, Christian ecotheology uh, eco will provide that framework which will speak to and also promote the ideas and practices around climate change. Finally, um, what will Christian, the role of Christian ecotheology is that it would express environmental responsibility, stewardship, and caring for creation. But when we look at 
practically to the role of I, I don't see the slides anymore, but perhaps there is. Thank you. Uh, when we look uh, in general at what the role of ecotheology is in the Christian communities around in the global south, etc., we will carefully see that when there is not a language to speak on environmental degradation, it is not possible to then articulate these matters within the community. So theology is presenting that possibility to connect climate change and God talk in the Christian communities. And then we'll be able to now allow us to promote praxis. What then do we do in this kind of situation? But not all ecotheologies are considered credible that for you and I as a scholar, when you engage or you come across an ecotheology that is being suggested, what would you look into to see its credibility? One, uh, I mentioned two things. The credibility of an ecotheology from whichever tradition would need to be culturally relevant to that. What context are we in and what are we speaking about? Are we in the 21st century or in the 18th century? So it's relevant in time and relevant in context. But also to develop such a theology, we would need to have a purposeful ideological orientation. In other words, finding an expression. And an example would be given uh, when we're talking about the earth keeping touches in Southern Africa and where trees are planted and during the Eucharist service, then that kind of ecotheology in praxis, when moved now onto paper, into books, you see that there's an expression of the same in their sermons, in their prayers, in their rituals and liturgy. So those are some of the suggested roles of ecotheology in our current time and the credibility of any ecotheology that we would have. We would move to the next slide, please. Thank you. At the start, it was clear that it is not one ecotheology. There are a variety. There are a variety because we have various Christian communities. There are a variety because uh, we have different traditions from which these communities subscribe. And therefore, in the first, uh, past five decades, theologians have tried to reclaim alternative theological traditions on matters, uh, theology and environmental uh, degradation and ecology. And at the core of this is how will we develop a relationship between the divine and nature? So this is getting emphasized within ecological circles over time. In Christian ecotheology, there are various theologies which have been developed. And those who are listening into this very workshop, you come from a different, or you could come from one of these traditions, and it could be the Roman Catholic tradition or Orthodox or Protestant, and the charismatic one, etc. And in all this, we will see various eco-theologies developed. And so we will call it the Roman Catholic eco-theology, or we can call it an Orthodox eco-theology, etc. Why the variety? The variety is because of the multiplicity of voices, and these are clustered in different schools of thought within Christian ecotheology, where we are recognizing that indeed to be authentically Christian, then you cannot harmonize all these traditions together. However, you can be able to defend that ecological practice within your ecclesial, uh, your ecclesial tradition. Looking into this, given those varieties, I will then want to proceed to perhaps sum up and uh, indicate that uh, there are various voices and these voices is what we will be coming to an uh, what are close where we are saying on the next slide that there's a summary of voices. What do we hear from the different ecclesial traditions. 
and I have provided a summary in terms of a simplified overview. This would be a topic that is taught a whole semester, ecotheology, and you could as well focus on just one tradition and say now the Roman Catholic tradition matters on ecotheology. However, I try to make this summary to help us see how these varieties engage one another. Now, if you're coming from the Roman uh, Catholic tradition, then the ecotheology within that tradition lays an emphasis on creation theology and the dignity of all creation. Um, not long ago, there was a conference around uh, the Laudato Si, and when you go through that uh, document, you will be able to see that emphasis on creation theology and looking at how all creation, the dignity of all creation, and how we need to be careful and consider the liberation that the earth is crying out to be uh, to be liberated in its context, and that we need to be sensitive that all creation and not some, but all there is dignity attached to all of them. Uh, Another voice is the orthodox ecotheology, uh, orthodox voice. And from that perspective, they show us the sacramental nature of creation. So it's mostly infused. If you are the orthodox practitioner, you will be looking at how uh, within creation, the, the sacramental nature of the same, and this is exemplified mostly within their ritual practice. But then how then do evangelicals speak on theology, uh, eco-theology. A number of them will emphasize the eschatological hope and will have more reference to biblical theology as opposed to what the Roman Catholics would. That, that emphasis shows that there's that divergence or there's that variation. Eco-feminist movements will again show the connection between when the earth is oppressed and therefore also the female personhood is also uh, that connection between oppression of the earth and of the female personhood, and ultimately looking into their core redemption. So this summary of voices, if you'd want to have a larger look into it, you would refer to uh, one PhD thesis of uh, one uh, Jason from the University of Birmingham. Now, I want to come towards the end. When we now talk about Pentecostal ecotheology, what does this lay emphasis on? And just like our very um, presenter at the very start, Mangaliso, made, paid more attention to this, that within Pentecostal ecotheology, there's an emphasis on the Holy Spirit, the role of the Holy Spirit on matters the environment, and what prophetic voices can we hear from the non-human nature? In that way, the non-human nature is also contributing to environmental concerns. And are we sensitive enough to hear? And what is it we are hearing? So this is just but a summary. And I said a simplified overview on the different traditions, religious traditions within Christianity, and how they address matters eco-theology. I therefore, yes, uh, that I will stop at that. and. Uh, just suggest that moving forward, it is important to know that ecotheology not only has a role in the now, but giving us that language to articulate our very, uh, the, the connection between environmental degradation and Christianity, but also then open up to say, what collective responsibilities do we have as Christian communities? And finally, do we have, can we say that the theology we are speaking on is, as it were, credible? So thank you, and back to the moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a very interesting input. Thank you, Dr. Lorraine Maseno. Uh, does anybody have questions so far? Kindly feel free to discuss the respective issues. We have now 20 minutes time. Uh, 
Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? My name is Lilian. I'm from the world. I'm also one of the co-leads of the part work. I can't hear anymore now. Lily, you're on mute or so. Yeah, yeah, you talk on mute, Lily. I can hardly hear anything. According to my screen, you're muted, Lillian. Someone muted me. Can you hear me now? I'm yes. not muted. Now, now, now we can hear you. Okay. Um, so, did you did you not hear anything of what I said, or did you listen to it? Okay. Did you hear anything? Start okay. from scratch. Okay, I will start again. So, I'm uh, I'm representing the World Evangelical Alliance um, in the Partnership on Religion and Sustainable Development, and I'm one of the co-leads of the work stream who's co-hosting the event today. I would like to thank you, Dr. Loreen, for your contribution which was very insightful and I would like to know from you or maybe also from other members in this group um, whether you know um, if there are kind of enough materials on eco-theology for all the different denominations. Like are there liturgies, are there booklets, are there handbooks, are there papers, is there research for all the different de denominations? So is the material out there for churches if they wanted to, to engage with the topic? Or is it still a need to, um, to um, prepare more materials for communities and congregations to, um, to engage with eco-theology? Dr. Masino, do you want to answer right away? Uh, thank you, moderator. Could I request to like get uh, a number of um, questions or input? Then I could be able to say like three and then I can respond and then another round of three if that is okay. Perfect, absolutely. Please thank go you. ahead and uh, ask your questions. Uh, hello, doctor. I also want to find out most of the reference that were drawn or um, based on the Old Testament in relation to the topic at hand. And uh, may I also find out if it could be anything that you could refer us to in terms of that directly to the that has direct link to the to the to the New Testament, please. Uh, I also have a question. Uh, uh, I'm Peter Jacobson from the Swedish Mission Council, um, and thank you for 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 the introduction here. Uh, I want, are there any unexpected moves of interest where we see traditions that has that have not been very keen on these issues that are not now moving rapidly? Uh, I'm sorry, I. I, I had another meeting, so I only heard the first minutes of our of the uh, presenter from from South Africa, uh, and maybe he he did mention that. Uh, but are there unexpected activism going on within the Christian community uh, where there where the interest hasn't been so large before? Can I also come in, uh, Dr. Lori? Sorry about that. Please yes, come. Sir. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, oh yes, uh, uh, Reverend Mokeleti from Lutheran Baptist Church in South Africa. Uh, what makes a lot of the, the 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 Christian groups not to be having too much interest in the eco theology? If you look at generally in South Africa, most of the churches are 
shifting or drifting away from that. They've never actually ever been able to connect uh, religion with, 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 with ecology at all. What could the reasons be and what do you think we should rather do in order for them to do that? Because um, we've been hammering this topic and it's very important that we take the matter back to the communities. May I find out that? Thanks. Thank you. So allow me to make an attempt to respond to the four questions that have been uh, given uh, in this first round, as it were. <clears throat> so uh, the first question from Lillian on whether there's enough material in the different denominations and whether this material is accessible and if at all there is need to prepare more material. Uh, within this very um, uh, within this webinar, and which uh, results from an engagement of religious communities um, and several conferences that have happened, at least in the global south, uh, to say that there is enough material may not. Uh, um, I would say it is not enough, as it were, in different denominations. Um, and even if it was there, whether it is out uh, in its numbers or sufficient for the churches, um, my response would be um, that, yes, there is need to prepare more material, material that cuts across the not only context, but the age groups, you will realize that in, in the global south, most of the population will be younger people, in um, young adults moving on into 40, uh, etc. And there is need uh, that this material is not um, one one sided. It, it needs to capture the attention. It needs to uh, capture their um, engagement so that May, it may not necessarily only be uh, uh, written material in books, but it could also be short clips, etc. So the mode in which this material can be disseminated, I suggest it could be much more than what we are doing now. And that uh, perhaps because there's not been a prioritization of uh, ecological concerns, that's why on the list, uh, when you look at the budgets of local communities, their congregations and churches, this doesn't come on the top in terms of yes, environmental matters. So we still need to prepare more material. And in many uh, platforms where this can be, I will encourage that wherever we are, you at the World Evangelical Alliance, or et cetera, would, yes, uh, encourage many more people to plug in and prepare prepare it and disseminate it through different various media. The next question was, uh, and I'll take the two together, uh, on why don't we have an interest in eco-theology in uh, the global south or and also why are references mainly from the Old Testament when we speak about uh, matters eco-theology? Uh, my first re uh, response to this would be that an interest, uh, the interest in ecotheology seems to not be uh, made priority in especially the global south. This would speak to uh, because of different uh, reasons. And one reason could be uh, matters biblical interpretation, like what you had um, in the presentation earlier today, that uh, the thought that the world is coming to an end and there will be a new earth and a new heaven makes a number of, say, those who use scripture or read the Bible in a certain way not pay too much attention. If anything, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. So matters biblical interpretation could hinder that uh, interest in uh, uh, eco-theology. And it's not uh, another reason. Uh, it could be um, the community, the congregation itself, where it finds itself in terms of the priorities given within this denomination. If the priority is not on 
the uh, environmental matters, then so there will be no interest because even within their tax program and their planning for the year, there's not any emphasis on matters. So the different com uh, congregations would also, it plays a part on which congregation are we in. On references to scripture or that would be found also in the New Testament, perhaps uh, uh, references that have also been used re uh, uh, regarding would be in like in Romans, uh, the book of Romans and and uh, the epistles are, uh, from uh, of Paul on the matters um, uh, uh, creation groaning for uh, the sons of God, etc. So uh, without only referring to Genesis, then the New Testament does have uh, places where we could glean, uh, and and Romans, the book of Romans could be one of them. We could glean a care for the environment and what it is and matters stewardship, the taking care. Within also the New Testament are references of the vine and we being the branches and those kinds of impersonification and the metaphors used and could easily be useful for an, uh, an eco theology. The last question came from Peter who's asking whether we have any unexpected moves uh, within Christian communities where an, a large interest has um, arisen. In my experience, um, I, I did some field work and I was writing on praying for rain from a Pentecostal perspective. And this took me to local congregations in certain times to listen and find out from them that is there any reference to uh, eco theology is there any reference to ecology, ecologi ecological matters? And in my experience, or from that fieldwork uh, in Nairobi, it was clear that there is a certain move amongst the younger generation. The younger generation, we are calling them young adults, the, those who are 20, 25, etc., because they are getting these moves are coming in through their. Uh, uh, they, are, they are learning it on, on the campuses and in their Christian congregations within the campuses. And when they come back to their local congregations, they are asking, shall we have some tree planting? Shall we do one, two, three? Which, uh, because of, yes, uh, their input in terms of age, the younger generation. So I think there's a, a move, an interest uh, among us, the younger people, the educated um, uh, young people and they are saying okay we need to plant some trees we need to be more sensitive to uh, the environment so that would be my response that in different congregations the youth are taking a stand on environmental matters thank you back to the moderator Thank you very much. They, I think there's one more question. We can overstretch five minutes, so please uh, continue your discussion if you like to. I think Stefan Thomas, Thomas Stefan is uh, asking a question. Thomas, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. You have to unmute yourself. Is that possible? Your microphone, you're, you're basically you're unmuted, but your microphone doesn't work. It looks like. If not, kindly write your questions or your comment in the chat box. If that's possible. Anybody else who wants to? Uh, just while we wait for Thomas to write. Yes, his part, Christopher Fine, thank you. From World Vision. Um, the part, what you just said, Lurie, and Lurine, around the engagement of youth activism, and especially I, about Christian young people uh, and children, I think we need to, to have theology that is speaking to young people that can encourage Christian young people to take that activism up. So I want to call on us as we develop theology that it will be theology that also can be translated in the language of young people and not stay up in the academic spheres.
And moderator, there was something, thank you very much, uh, Christian, that is, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, moderator, there was something we needed to do towards the end of the group. I think you could, yes, lead us on to that as Thomas is, his hand is up. Thank you. Can, can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Uh -huh. yes. Thank you. So um, my, my question is, um, thank you. As, uh, first of all, my, my name is Thomas Stefan from Bread for the World, and uh, thank you for your presentation. My question, is there beyond Christianity some kind of interreligious uh, inter theological dialogue, maybe with uh, Judaism and Islam, on uh, ecological issues? Or is that uh, any, any religion doing working on, on their, them themselves uh, in that res respect? Or is there some interreligious theological dialogue, not only practical, which does Saf say, for instance, uh, but also on theological issues? Thanks. Okay, we close the round of the questions. Maybe Dr. Doreen Masino, you could answer the question, and then we have to come to an end and find uh, action points. Uh, thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, clearly, yes, uh, I would say yes. Um, the response for that we are economic, uh, ecumenical dialogues. Uh, in, in Kenya, we uh, we have ecumenical um, uh, summits, and these have been going on. Uh, when you bring groups together, the Muslims, the Hindus, the Christians, one of the point that allowed them to converge very quickly on the Kenyan, uh, in the Kenyan scene uh, is matters the political uh, arena in terms of what is going on in politics, what are we looking into, but also matters environment. And so, yes, that this is a good, or can I say it has been a useful topic in ecumenical dialogues and allows a number of them to find a meeting point and work together. So uh, indeed, there has been, um, yes, those dialogues uh, within the ecumenical circles in Kenya, I could say so. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I will share the document one more time you can see we have to we lack uh, time but we could maybe find some important points for an agenda of action further research and engagement maybe you can discuss this last point and then come to an end in about five minutes mm. um may i please yes please go ahead yeah, for, for uh, further action, I would strongly recommend uh, to kind of work on an uh, overview on the different uh, theological traditions you introduced to us, uh, Lorraine, with the different emphasis and perspectives. Uh, I think that would be helpful also for our uh, green TLC teaching and learning community, which Tanya will introduce later on, uh, because um, there, there's that image of uh, touching or seeing an elephant from different angles and to see the different uh, theological approaches or perspectives would be helpful for a comprehensive understanding. And if we could produce something what you uh, had on this one slide a bit um, more for churches and communities, I think that would be a good uh, step for action. Um, so that I can benefit from different uh, theological traditions, which are not very common to my personal tradition. Okay, what else? Maybe you could just write this point down and um, if we go back to the main discussion uh, in the uh, capacity building workshop, we uh, you can bring this up uh, again. So please remind this, this point. Dr. Mazzino, do you want to comment on this or is anybody else who wants to raise a question or an action point? 
I would like to uh, emphasize Christo's point. Can you hear me? Yep. We can. Yes, we can. Yeah, okay. Like he said that we should develop a theology in a language that can be understood by young people. And as Lorene said, um, many people in African countries are young. So for them to take up eco-theology, it's important to develop a language which speaks to them. So and this could also possibly be an action point. Thank you, Lily. Uh, what else? Could I suggest something? Yes, please. I, I think here, uh, maybe I should put my camera on also. Uh, I think that the religious communities and their role in uh, information and disinformation in this map, because I think one of the biggest issues in climate is that there is so, min so much disinformation going on. Um, and very often I see that religious communities are carriers of that misinformation uh, and and uh, being quite skeptical even about the whole issue of, of climate change. So, so the role of information and misinformation in, in religious communities. As an action point. OK, anybody else? Just the last one from my side. I think what uh, Francois Engelbrecht has uh, shared was also the how this all, what, what, how this impacts in terms of climate change, in terms of droughts, etc. When we when we do the theology, I don't. I think we must also make sure that we link this with uh, practical uh, impact and stories from the field and how it impacts uh, people's lives and children's lives. So uh, com the combination of theology with uh, the practice that also enhances what the. That Peter has said in terms of the uh, the misinformation part to combine that with that. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope everybody reminds what he or she has said, so we can bring that maybe together in the next session. Kindly note that we have to go back to the main link. Uh, I will share it in a second with you. We have now a break until 12 o'clock, so please feel free to uh, take a break and then see you again at 12 p.m. We have another presentation from Dr. Tanya van Wijk. Uh, we are very much looking forward to seeing you again. And then afterwards we have a panel discussion. I can share the program with you again so you see what, what we are planning for the rest of the day. Excuse me, could I just suggest two two more action points quickly? Sorry. Of course, yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, first of all, just to, to thank every participant for uh, quite some input and uh, widening our scope of thought. Uh, two other action points. One of them is uh, uh, an assessment of the available eco-theologies. What we would establish as this is the eco-theology of a different, say, uh, e e ecclesial community, an assessment of the same, and it's in terms of its, um, its praxis and also in terms of its credibility. And the last one, another action point is a way we can engage ethnographic studies and through uh, an ethnography of eco-theology in the different contexts could help us perhaps speak into matters, the information and misinformation uh, as has been suggested. Thank you. Just a practical question. Um, when we come back, are we automatically back into the big group or do no, we? No, no, no. Actually, uh, you have to click on uh, another link. I will share it in a second with you. Wait. Perfect. So maybe everybody of you could try to just try the link and see if it works. I cannot see it.
Hi. Hi there. Um, some of you already joined the other group. Um, I suggest that everybody just joins uh, the link and you can just have a break of 15 minutes and then just uh, if you want to keep it switched on, uh, you can just join the other session easily. Otherwise, you just go close the session and you would click on the link either way and you can join. If there are any questions or problems, kindly just um, write us a message. Is there a question? Yes. Uh, the thing is, my app doesn't directly switch between the conversations. Mm -hmm. so if I could send you my email address in the chat and you could email me the yes. link there. Yes, of course. It should work. Okay. The others, it worked, right? You could easily change no, to the other we, session right no we we have i have to wait uh, yeah yeah, yeah. I, I have to admit yeah uh, so i click the link and then uh, yes i will i will accept will all in. your uh, admissions and then you are in the in the call okay i'm still waiting i have nothing i'm still waiting in the chat box you have to open the link in the chat box do you see the chat box otherwise you just go on the link you saw on the invitation mail. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay? Uh, if it doesn't yeah. work, just go to the invitation. Sorry? Is it the same link as in the yes, invitation? Yes, it is the same link as um, before. It is the main session. It is uh, the same link that you clicked this morning at 9 o'clock. Okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. So have a nice break and see you at 12. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye.